And it's gone. That did not last for a long time. So, hello everyone who are you here for today. Politics, been a while since the politics video. But I felt today here, or actually more yesterday, but you know, today then. I want to discuss, you know, Swedish politics, right? Now I explain it to people outside of Sweden, or, I mean, technically that I am, you know, Swedish. I'm Swedish technically, right? But I moved away from Sweden when I was 22. I still follow politics in Sweden, of course, to some extent. And mostly I dislike it so much that I hate it. And I am actually a lot more involved and better at uh, American politics, mostly because of stocks. It's also more interesting, I think, in politics in America. But also, I have a lot of stocks in America. I have some Swedish stocks, right? But I feel it's a lot more worthwhile to know about Biden and Trump or whatever and so on, right? For, uh, for my, my money, basically. Uh, but anyway, Sweden then had this huge thing yesterday. That was that it had, not really, but... No technically speaking, but still. First female president, right? Or prime minister, as we have in Sweden then. Um, but she got fired immediately in like one day. And it's an hilarious event. And um, sort of aspect to this thing. So, as I in our previous video, I talked about the sauce commercial about Swedish culture. So, I like to culture right. I have, I'm a, it's called user researcher, and I have a, I, I, I wrote in papers or so on, right, about human behavior, you know, behavior organizations, so on, right, big data, behavior economy, so on. In this media, a lot. So, I'm going to give you first the expression of Swedish culture here, right? And then we're talking about the election. So, Swedish culture is a lot about skadeglädje. And skadeglädje is then the Swedish word for schoidenfreud. Uh, but in Swedish, skadeglädje is much bigger, okay? The German thing. I actually hate that you people out in America, whatever, right, in English, so on. You're using that word Schadenfreude, like the German invented it. No, no, no. Swedes invented it. Okay, Swedes are so in Scottish media. They're insanely about it. Right? So for me, yesterday, no matter if I want a female prime minister or not, I, I have to say it was hilarious because even though I'm not very Swedish, I am very anti-Swedish in my personality and so on and my own culture, right, so to speak. But when it comes to Scottish media, that is my shit too. My mother, she truly loves Scottish media. She's a, it's her absolute favorite thing, right? And there's a saying in Swedish that my mother always says, and that is Skadeglädje is the so Skadeglädje. Skadeglädje er den enda sanna glädjen, which is like Skadeglädje is the only true happiness. Uh, so that's the saying she loves to say. She's really into that shit, right? So for example, my mother, of course, she wants a you know female prime minister. I guess so, right? If she cares about the gender. But she was laughing at the two. She was like, oh, it's hilarious. You know, she was like, oh, get the, get the fire prime minister. She's fired in like an hour. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. People are crying. Oh, it's, it's so fun, you know. So we just love that shit. So, so basically, like that, I know basically the mayor in my hometown. And she's the leader of the Feminist Initiative Party. Sweden has a party literally called Feminist Initiative, which are incredibly left wing. And I know my I had I dated a woman uh, many years ago. She's one of the leaders there too, kind of. She's like a singer artist up there. I won't say who it is, but you know, and uh, so on. Uh, one of my shadow friends uh, is one of the higher ups of the Green Party, which is a very left, coming to them later and so on. So, of course, all the people I knew in Sweden, right, in my hometown and so on, etc., they were spamming, of course, on Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitter and stuff, right? They were spamming so much. They were like, oh, it's finally happening. A woman, life is, you know, life is better and so on, right? So, of course, me as a Swede, I'm just like, well, she didn't actually win though, she didn't actually win, and she was just tolerated, and you know, we haven't really actually gotten to goal here yet, but okay, and I was like, okay, sure, they, they, they talked to me in about a few hours, and I was like, okay, so for me, I think yesterday was one of my funnest days in a long time, because my whole my whole, fed, my whole feed, right, from people from my, you know, my Swedish lives and people, right, were spamming, oh, how great it is, right, oh, amazing it is, and then suddenly, it's all quiet, right? Two, three hours later, it's all quiet. And then all the memes are right. All these great memes popping up here, you know, speed run, any percent. She could see it's like, got in there, quit the same fire the same day, and so on. All these memes, and they keep coming, and so on. I, it's hilarious. Right? So I think it was a hilarious, hilarious day, right? It's very Swedish, yeah, make fun of the idiots, so to speak. And I just played this Jante Lagen in Swedish, then. It's this. Uh, the law of Jante is an idea that I think you could basically summarize it as don't think that you are something. Don't think you're better than me, you know. That's very, very Swedish. It's very ingrained in the Swedish society. 
This one is why I left Sweden right. One is why I hate the Rapid Sweden. I truly, truly hate Deadly Sweden. Uh, Janta Lagen, I think the worst thing ever. It basically is the whole concept of don't think that you are better than me. Don't pretend that you are better than me. Don't, don't attempt to be better than anyone else. So the whole system is to push you down, right? If you're a good student, shut up. You should possibly be worse than someone, right? If you want to make money, don't try to make money. You don't worth the money, right? Or you think you're better than me. That's it's incredibly ingrained in how Swedish people behave, right? And because of that reason, most of the comedy in Sweden, especially some of the TV shows, are very focused on this skaldigheter, right? Because it is to make fun of people's misery. And for example, Lyxfällan, a very popular show in Sweden, going for 10 plus years, it's about these economic people right, going to people that failed in whatever investment they made or wasted the money, right? And then they make fun of them, right, for being idiots, basically. They help them, but it's mostly used TV where you're like, Oh, you're an idiot! You wasted your money on a car! You're an idiot! That's basically what the TV show is, right? Um, it's incredibly popular in Sweden. Uh, because Sweden loves that shit. They love to laugh at the neighbor, you know, bought the expensive car, and then the car, you know, sort of burning, whatever. Yeah, they, oh, you bought a Tesla, oh, it's burning now, oh, you know, just, that is very, very Swedish. So, it is, I think, incredibly natural to see the reaction of Sweden now that, of course, you have the very, like, far left feminists, right? That are so into gender, they don't care about uh, the Magdalena and them, Anderson. They don't care about the politics, they don't care about marriage, whatever, right? They just want to have women. And here I'm not saying that Magdalena is bad or good or whatever. I'm just saying that those people, they clearly don't care about what she can do. Right? They just care about her gender, of course. And then you have the rest of the country, right? So not just the right party, but like everyone else in Sweden, except people that are very, very, you know, feminist oriented, right? Or making hell of fun of them, right? So I think it's kind of hilarious because, of course, the right side, the right wing parties are making a lot of fun of them. Because that's a thing, yeah, of course they're gonna do, because they're anti that part of it, right? But even people, I would say, everyone I know in Sweden, that's on the left, or I mean, center left, or whatever, right? Everyone that's not completely obsessed with gender, right? Or like, ah, it failed, it failed, you know? Because it's hilarious, right? Again, in a Swedish kind of <laughs> cultural standpoint. Oh, she thought she was gonna be number one, and she got fired, you know? like that, that's, you know, how... Like, my mom, right? Again, my mom is the right wing, you know what I mean? She's quite centric or probably left, you know, I would say, yellow speaker, and a woman, and my sister too, so right there. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you see the fail? So I'm on the phone, it's like, oh, they failed, no, it's hilarious, you know what I mean? They're like, ah, oh. like, that's kind of how people are, right? And it definitely helps so much, again, that when I went on Facebook you know, yesterday, right, all my, you know, old friends from school and this woman that's the one, they're all spamming, and oh, female, 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 right? And then it's like, oh, you can see the message going, like, you know, Apex, and then, pff, you know, so it's uh, it was hilarious. But anyway, it comes a lot from the combination of Sweden being, of course, very progressive, right? Very, very, you know, pro-trans, right? Gay, right? Of course, very, very feminine-oriented, right? Very, very, like, gender, gender, gender. Uh, yet, Sweden has never had, actually, a female prime minister, and still hasn't had that, because actually, Magdalena Land didn't actually start. So she actually, technically speaking, she actually resigned before she could actually resign. It's kind of a funny thing. Uh, I mean, she got voted, not in actually, voted later too, but she basically got like tolerated to maybe become it, that she got fired before she could start. So it's kind of like, you know, you go to a job, right? You get the resume in there, they take you for an interview, and then they're like, oh, you get the job, right? And then you don't actually show up to actually start. You never actually come to the first day of your, of your office. You can just, you kind of quit and you go somewhere else. That's kind of what she did, so she actually never became the first female prime president. And, if you come into this later too, but she also got betrayed by the Green Party, which makes it extra funny, because the Green Party in Sweden, as in most countries, but obviously very much in Sweden, are incredibly left-wing. They're arguably the most left-wing party in Sweden. The Greens, yeah, Media Party, yet, MP, uh, they are super, super left-wing. They're obviously incredibly for, you know, quotation and female rights, and they hate men and so whatever, right? Uh, but they're very, very much for, uh, you know, female gender, right? Uh, so them betraying her was also extra spicy, right? That they're, oh, she's betrayed by the... And I saw a tweet from one of these like, big Swedish, um, how's it, celebrities, right? And they're just like, oh yeah, let's go! And she was like, you know, she wrote something like, oh yeah, this is the best thing ever. Social Democrats, which is the big map of and the Green Party, you know, they're doing it. Woo, first female, first female. That's like everyone comment is like, this aged very well. <laughs> Every comment is like, this did not age well in that, that state for like an hour. Um, but anyway, let's first talk about how it works tonight. I'm going to break it down for you guys, how the 
uh, politics actually works. But first, you know, I want to say this thing before I break down the politics here in more in detail. So, imagine you go to a game, any sport game, football, soccer, hockey, whatever, right? And you actually didn't play the first games. So you're in the final. And people are like, oh shit, you're going to have the first woman winning ever, you know? In this, I guess, mixed gender hockey or whatever. But it's like she didn't actually play the semi final. She didn't play the quarter final, right? Levine was the team captain of those games. So people are. That's the first issue is people are kind of celebrating that, oh yeah, we finally gonna have the first female captain of this sport or whatever, you know? And people are like, ah, but she didn't actually get there on her own merits. It was another guy that was playing, and then he had like a mental breakdown and quit before the final game, and they kind of put her as a replacement. So not really. So that's the third issue with this thing. Right? She wasn't actually elected by people at all. Okay. So people of this country has not voted for Magdalena to be the prime minister. Neither, important thing, have they voted for her as being the wise prime minister. Okay. So this is America. Okay. We have Kamala Harris, uh, and uh, obviously if Biden dies, Kamala Harris will become the first female president of America. Right. Of the United America. We all know that. That's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, but the difference is, I, th I think there are a lot of differences here. One difference immediately, that I think is a very important difference, is that uh, on the ballot, when you were voting for Biden, it said you're also voting for Kamala Harris, right? There is not a, this, this, it's very, very clear that she is the female vice president. The first one, and of course, then again, if he dies, she becomes the president, right? There's no question about that. That's how the system works. Everyone who voted for Biden also voted for Kamala Harris as his replacement, right? Like that system is pretty clear here. And uh, we can discuss if she only got to vote because of her gender and skin color, all this stuff, right? I would say it's like it looks kind of weird because obviously Biden he wasn't very popular before that. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I'm, I'm much more actually well read on American politics, but whatever. Uh, it's not a video, I guess, right? But yeah, certainly, you know. Uh, but, the, but, but I mean, of course. It is very, very clear that she is the wise president. Okay. In Sweden, though, Magdalena was not the wise president or the wise prime minister. Right? She was not the wise person on the ballot. It was Levian and his party. People say, oh, would you vote for the party? Yes, technically, you do vote for the actual party in Sweden, but you still vote for the person. I mean, if you ask people on the, on the street, right, oh, who are you voting for? Oh, I kind of like this guy. Uh, uh, Jimmy, ah, oh, he's the only good. I want it for him, right? Or, or Annie Love, she's so intelligent. I want her to be the lead, right? Most people still vote for the person. And so immediately there, the people are really, really strongboarding her as finally a female, you know, leader. It's kind of weird because she didn't actually get there on her own marriage. She didn't actually debate all the leaders. She didn't, you know, take the time, right, to fight all the leaders in the, in, a, in, the, in the cage, to speak. She actually never went through that. It's basically just... Here's the team that already is the final, and and the other guy that's been doing it for ten years, he died. So you you can take over the seat, right? You know what I mean? It's kind of like that, more or less. That's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is that they celebrated way too early. So Sweden has a parliament system where they have different mandates, right? Depending on the vote three years ago, and the thing is that Magdalena didn't actually win the vote. So if I compare to America, she didn't actually win the electoral votes. Or the popular votes. So how did she be, even win then? She actually didn't win. That's the thing. So she got 114 yes and 174 no's. Like that's like a freaking like, like what? It's like a lot. She got like 33 percent of the of the votes. Right? She wasn't even close to winning that shit. So first of all, as I mentioned, she was never actually elected by. The people, right? People hasn't voted for her whatsoever. She was not on the ballot. She wasn't the vice president, the white picks, whatever. She was just like one of the party members of the winning party, right? And actually, not the winning party, coming later as well. But it's just like, okay, so she wasn't there. And then she hasn't really been like the. I, 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 want, I mean, she's kind of like a. You know, she was part of the team, of course, but she wasn't really like, again, the, the official, the second in command or whatever. So that's happening. And then they actually got. To this sport event, right? The final episode, the final episode, the final fight. Everyone is celebrating. She's the Italian team captain, even though it's not her own merits. Not saying that she's a worse or a bad leader. There, I'm just saying that she wasn't actually got to the final on her merits. Right? She, she, she didn't. Uh, so anyway, she's in the final. She has her ten, you know, party members, right? Her ten team players with her. 
However, they're fighting 20 people, right? So immediately too, he's like, oh, yes, she's in the final, but she's fighting like twice as big of a team. She's fighting like 20 people. They're gonna lose this final episode, you know what I mean? It didn't make any sense. I understand that the 10 minutes are like, oh, finally a woman. But, it, but it's like, how, how is she gonna win this? Because she, she has so little power that, yes, she became the team captain after the guy died. But she has like a basically an impossible fight to win. She's gonna lose anyway, you know, when he actually gets into the fight, right? Um, that basically what happened. She um, she won, not really won then. It's more tolerated, right? That she became the leader of the party, and then there was no way they were actually gonna win the actual economical budget questions when they were gonna team up. So the way it works with them, which I think is really stupid, is that they have different rules depending on where you fight basically right so okay we're gonna vote for can this woman uh became the leader based on already having the leader being from her party then that requires less votes basically it requires you not to lose on a, like a on a higher number right kind of thing so it's like oh well so it's basically again it's going to a soccer game and it's like well here in the semi-final uh, you, you you win the game if you get like five points they only get ten uh, but if they get 11 you lose, but if you get like half what they get you win, you know, it's like that That's the kind of rules It's like well if, as long as you get half their points you still win this soccer game or whatever Which doesn't make any sense and then of course in the next battle It's like he have to actually win and everyone knows that beforehand too that you have to actually win the next battle so It's like a handicap the first fight right second fight Handicap is off right and then it's like how are you gonna beat them down because they, they, were, they got you know they, she, she got her ass You know she got she got owned right she got smacked around in the first game, yeah, it was like 114, 174. Uh, and some people did abstain, but these people did abstain, even if they joined her side, they would have lost anyway. So it's like, okay, she got her ass handed to her hard the first game, and she won by like really weird system rules here. But in the next game again, those rules are gone, so she has no chance, right? So, so there's a lot of parties, and um, it's like, she's the leader now. Now then, of the red part, right? Social Democrats. And uh, Sweden has a lot of parties. It's not the perfect, uh, it's like an older um, reviews here. But, and also Sweden has supporters on, on this list. Uh, Sweden has a 4% uh, minimum to be in the actual uh, Riksdagen. And uh, I think it's a 1.5% to have uh, tax uh, founding. So if you have like 1.5, you don't have any mandate, but you get some money from the state to do ads or whatever. And if you have four, then you get at least one manager, right? So you get like, depending on, of course, what you get, right? And uh, Sweden then have to have collation, of course, where they combine different parties and so on. And technically, to give you the backstory here then, is that the right side of Sweden, the right parties, are actually clearly in power. Uh, they have definitely more than 50% of the mandates. They've had it since three years ago, when the last election was. And there's actually no way that this minority left party should even be in control. The only reason they are in control is because the very big party, serious Democrats, are known as anti-democrat, right? Somewhat of a, people would say, neo-Nazi party, right? And they are so big, uh, they have a huge uh, percentage in Sweden, or more than percent, so they're very, very big. And uh, the other right-wing parties doesn't want to work with them, right? But clearly Sweden is in majority right-wing party, if they all just uh, teamed up, right? And because of the different rules here then, it's kind of easy to explain why, how she could hire and fire in like an hour. Because, okay, to get hired to speak, right, to be tolerated, again then, the rules are different, right? You just have to have less people, kind of more than this barrier in your read anyway, right? So even if the right is like, doesn't want to team up, right, uh, they, some of the right side part then, or the centered right parties, they voted nothing. They just they was just they picked neutral, right? They picked neutral because they were like, "Oh, we really want a female leader, so let's ignore it." But yeah, they were like, "Oh, okay, let's not say anything." You know what I mean? So they, then she could like go in to the next game, right? But in the second game, she wants to discuss, you know, uh, economical budgets and actual laws and it's a budget then, but you know, and so on, right? And um, the new budget, of course, was set other precedents right they said other systems and so on and eventually new laws etc right and then the right side is like oh, we have to team up on this shit though her there we can't agree on this left wing ideas right it's one thing you, you like yeah sure you can be the leader but we're gonna agree you can be you, you'll have to be a team captain we're gonna agree on this crazy ideas you have right 
So then she could completely mold, right? Yeah. The, the, the next game, they all you said, okay, F, F her, you know, and you owned her. Yeah, and I was like, we don't want this shit, right? So, yeah, so did she, and that was so clear from the beginning because she, she says, no way she's gonna beat that uh, with your ideas, right? Uh, and then when it immediately when it happened, the left wing party, the green party, then immediately betrayed her. It's like, oh, screw you, you the game too, yeah. They were like, oh, there are too many of them. So they just left, just stand her on the way too, right? Made it even weaker immediately. Uh, which was hilarious because again the Green Party is so incredibly feminist oriented, right? And one woman I know, then uh, my shadow friend, that is high up in the rank, right? She was quarters life. <laughs> you know, she's like, ah, we we betrayed the first female leader because she's having a mental breakdown, right? Again, my scar again. I think it's hilarious. You see these people having this. I mean, for me, of course, I'm a, I'm a merit-based person, right? I'm a liberal merit-based person. I couldn't care less, right, if it's a female or a man that is the leader of anything, right? So long as they have the merits for it. So I don't care. I mean, honestly, I found Magdalena much better than Lubian. I hate Lubian. Lubian is a really incompetent leader. And I thought about grandmother that hates her. My grandma was like, ah, you know. But yeah, my grandma loves her. She could fight immediately. She loved it. Even more than my mom, right? But I thought of my grandma. I was like, yeah, I mean, I agree, grandma. It's really funny. But also, I would still rather have her than Levian because Levian, I see him as incredibly competent, right? And he's, he's like 6 out of 10, right? So I'm like, yeah, I mean, she's probably better than him, right? So I don't care about the gender. I care about the actual merit. That being said, though, as we saw yesterday, and like with my friend then in the green part, right? It, it is hilariously fun to know because, of course, they're so invested into this, their gender, right? They're so invested into having a woman as a leader. So they, of course, they have a mental breakdown, right? so many of them, and, it, and I found it honestly really hilarious. But that's because they're spending so much time on, of course, not actually caring about merit, right? They're caring about, oh, finally it's happening. And it's also kind of fun in Sweden, because Sweden has talked so much about having a feminist government. Sweden has mentioned having like a feminist military. Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, it's like, what? Sweden, uh, a few years ago, Talked about that we have the first in the world feminist military, feminist defense system, whatever. Right? I was like, what does that even mean? Like, what, what? So we only have female soldiers, or something? What, 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 what does that mean? Do I want that? I mean, I'm a man, and I'll leave there anyway when they mention that. So it doesn't doesn't really matter for me, I suppose, technically speaking. That will be defended by some other military. But I was like, I, I guess I can't be drafted anymore. That's good. But it doesn't make any sense that you want to have a complete army of only female Amazonian shield maidens. I was like, what, what is this thing? <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense, right? It's like, what is that? Feminist military. Yeah, we only have women in our military. It's like that. I, I don't want to, you know, break the bubble here, guys. But there is a difference between men and, and females, right? It's like physical difference. Yeah, and I think a whole army of only females. Uh, it sounds very hot, very waifu. It's very, very attractive, but it's... You know, all the hot base with big titties, but it doesn't sound, doesn't sound like a very strong army. It doesn't sound like a, the best army to have, but that's what they're claiming. Of course, they actually didn't do that, but they were talking like that. They were like, oh, feminist government, feminist military, and so on, right? So, so Sweden has spent so much time, the government and celebrities, well, they spent so much time, right, building up is that Sweden is the most progressive, the most female country, the most patriarchal, so on, right? But they never actually still had a female uh, prime minister. So that's why it's so funny too, right? Because people were really, really celebrating yesterday. But as I said, in my viewpoint, it's kind of like coming to the final, right? Uh, it's kind of like coming to like this tournament tournament arc, right? You get to the final, the guy dies, a woman takes over, and people are like, yeah, we have finally the first woman that wins before she actually plays the game. Yeah, and they're all running around screaming, winning, like before she actually plays, right? Before she actually enters the fray. And I think that's also one thing where I, I immediately disliked, honestly, that people were saying, oh, we finally have a female prime minister, you know, this is the change, we change, we're looking for someone. It's not the same thing. Like when Obama won, right? You voted for Obama, yeah. Like, you know, I, I like Obama, yeah, you voted for Obama, right? Uh, or, as I mentioned, Kamala Harris, you voted for her as the vice president. Uh, this would be kind of like, you know, a white guy winning, right? And then Obama is comes in and says, I can be, he died, I can be now, you know. That, that's kind of what she did, right? Yeah, it's like the older guy has been president for three years, and then he dies and she takes over, you know what I mean? Without being the vice, yeah. That's not the same shit, you know. No one voted for that, yeah. It's like, oh, but this is how the system works, and it's like this weird law rule that we can change the ruler when we want to. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, um, I don't think I would ever see her as, um, how say it, at least voted by the people, of course, by far from that. 
That doesn't mean that she's incompetent, right? Doesn't mean, I mean, again, I think she's better than Levine. I'd rather have her than Levine. But I would not say that we have somehow, I don't know, defeated the patriarchy or whatever in Sweden until she actually wins an actual election. Right? Next year in Sweden, there's an actual election. And if she would win then, because even if she could fire now from being the prime minister, she of course is the leader of the biggest party. Right? If she wins next year in the, the S Democrats, then right, if she you know wins with them, uh, yeah, then I would say people had voted for the first female prime minister in Sweden. But you know, having her coming in from a sideline, so the guy kind of quit, the mental breakdown kind of thing, it, it's not really the same thing, right? And as I mentioned again, it is far from the system that the USA has. Where it's a very officially, this is a vice president. Sweden actually has a vice um, staff minister and a vice pr a prime minister, but that used to be the Green Party leader. So we actually had a Green Party leader, was that? But then she, okay, she did so much dumb shit, so I can't even remember what she said the first time, but she was the one that cried on the news. Uh, was that her? I think her and her party colleague. Was like comparing Auschwitz to Sweden or something in modern times, and it was uh, she was she was crying for the immigrants. And she was doing so many weird stuff that she got fired basically from being the vice prime minister, uh, and it was kind of weird because the S Democrats went out and said that well, yes, she's the vice prime minister, but if our leader died, Levine, then she will not become the, the she won't be in the power, which means that she was only vice in name, but not actually technical. So. Honestly, being the vice prime minister apparently doesn't even make you apparently the actual leader if the de facto person dies because there are other rules anyway. You see what I mean? So Sweden has a lot of stupid systems, right? So basically, honestly, to my understanding, when you vote for basically the vice prime minister Sweden, kinda, which I really do, but you vote for the vice, you know, technically speaking, you don't do that. But if you would, you know, be <laughs> pronounce that, like you have this leader as the vice. That person still won't necessarily become the real leader because they can still do this weird uh, unelected parliament changes afterwards anyway, like they did with this woman here, right? Because they kind of sort around. Like she, Magdalena wasn't the one that was going to become, she wasn't the wise again. She's not the green party, right? It was another woman then uh, coming from another sideline, right? So it, it's, it's all confusing and doesn't make any goddamn sense and it fits to me very anti democratic that you can suddenly change leader without asking the people, right? Uh, it, it feels very weird to me. And also that's why extra funding, right, of course. And that comes back to this whole culture of Scott the Gladiator, right? Because the extra funding, right, being a Swede, sitting there being like, wait, she won being a Swede? Because I mean, yesterday I was working and then I saw, why well, oh, she won, but she didn't actually, I haven't, I mean, I was like, when was this election? I didn't vote for this shit, you know? I didn't even get to vote no, you know? I mean, I was like, yeah, okay. Oh, I guess she was like picked by parliament, but in parliament, again, she lost in Parliament, 114 yes, 174 no. Oh, she also lost in Parliament, but how did she become elected then? Or who voted for this? I didn't vote for this thing. I don't know who is she, you know, I mean, how she get here? The Parliament was, was clearly against her. How did she become the leader? And it's like, oh, the rules in this specific case, because this guy quit that she takes over, the rules doesn't matter. You know I mean, honestly, I think it exposes Sweden's quite anti democratic system, right? People are going to say, oh, this parliament is all been... And a lot of people on the internet yesterday were defending it. No, but this has always been like this. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just hate the argument. People are like, well, it's been like this for 20 years or 30 years. Like, uh, okay, so it's just because something has been there for a while doesn't mean that I think it's a good system. Right? And people are going to say that, oh, you're saying this because she's a woman. No. If, if Levian quit, right? He had like a breakdown and quit, right? And they suddenly there would be another man there. I also would have said that that feels kind of unfair. Like that, that guy wasn't the wise, you know? Because like, comparing it to America, right? It's like if Trump, uh, or, or let's say Biden, okay, let's say Biden dies, then, okay, Biden's competent. If Biden dies and Kamala Harris doesn't become the president, yeah, that would be really stupid. She's the wise president. Like, she's, isn't she going to take over? People would freaking riot, right? I would be, I would riot too. I'd be like, this is crazy. That is the vice president. I vote for the like. Yeah, I'll be like, what? What I have, man? Like, yeah, that would be crazy, right? I'd be like, what is happening? And that's basically how Sweden is. Sweden is like, yeah, this is a wise person, but we actually we don't, we don't care about that. Yeah, we don't actually care about that. That's how they explained it even a few weeks ago. Again, with the with the green part person being the wise for until she got fired, right? Yeah, they were like, honestly, they explained that she was like, no, yes, she's the wise prime minister. 
but only in title. She actually it doesn't it's into the paper because she's so she's an idiot, so we don't give her the rules or whatever. It was a little weird too because because she was making so so, so, much, so many embarrassing statements, right? People want her to get fired, of course. And so the S part of them basically instead of firing her, right? They were like, well, it's like yes, like don't, don't worry, like she actually has no power. It's just, it's just a title. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they were like. I, but there has no power actually. This is a, a name. This is a title. Don't worry. If he dies, she won't become the leader anyway. The death is yeah, the, the solution was not to fire her. It was to say that well, we won't actually follow that anyway. So don't don't worry, guys. We don't care about this wise thing anyway. So it, it's just like a, it's just a name sheet. That honestly was their answer, right? And we sit here again with Madalena, where. She wasn't the wife. I get the point. Yeah, almost I'm iterating, but yeah, she wasn't that. She kind of come in from like a from a sideline to became the first female president, right, or for prime minister. So it it really is funny, and of course it really speaks to that. I think, then as I mentioned earlier, Sweden has incredibly, of course, pushing the left, you know, uh, gender agenda, right. That is very true to say. I mean, regardless if you have left or right, Sweden is clearly a very, very left and very, you know, much gender, gender, gender pushing, right. And yet they never managed to have a female prime minister. And now then, uh, arguably she kind of, you know, was pushed in from the sideline, right? Breaking, not the rules per se, but obviously breaking common sense, right? Breaking like, is that how it works? Yeah. Kind of like, you know, breaking the people's mind, right? How, how it works. And then immediately she gets fired. I mean, I think it's hilarious. Uh, anyway, the last thing that Madalena said, which is even more embarrassing, back to this, she said, yeah. Okay, so she gets... But hired, right? Kinda. It's more like it's more like I mentioned. She kind of gets to the final episode and then she doesn't win the fight. You know, it's more like that. Yeah, she gets to the final fight and and she's fighting this gigantic giant. You know, twice her size, and we have no evidence she's gonna win this thing because there's one thing that the other guy that that won the other fights gets to the final fight. He can win. Or he has to, he's the main he, main character, the hero. She got. She's just a replacement, you know. Like he, he it's like yeah, it's, it's like the the heroic part. Remember, you know, the hero guy. He dies right at at the, at the second I'll penalty fight. Yeah, and then she takes over. And it's like I can still win. You like, but but you didn't defeat the, the Goliath thing before. You 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 beat the other. You haven't even fought the other guys. You know, it's like she jumps in from nowhere, right? And of course, people are making a lot of memes. It's really funny. But then she's also made this really delusional last statement here. I think it's very funny to say, very delusional. And then she said that, oh, after the Green Party betrayed her, she's like, I'm going to make my own party. Only me, only I will rule, you know. I will be the dictator. <laughs> kind of. No. What she said is that because Sweden has all these parliaments, right, and they have to collaborate and so on, and actually the right side is much bigger, and they're clearly in control, right? They just refuse to collaborate. Uh, but now they are collaborating. Uh, they last like one year. So the right wing are clearly stronger, and the left wing shouldn't be in power probably anyway. And the election coming next year should be interesting. But anyway, because of the reason, right? The the S stand, the Red Party, they need to combine with the other communist parties or as well as like left wing parties called the Left, which are communist. But they're straight up communist. They have admitted the communist. They used to be called the Communist Party. Uh, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying they're a communist party, right? And their leader lost Oli. He was a leader for many years. He was a very proud communist, and actually. I respect him. I don't want to say any communists, but I want to say that guy I liked him because they asked him in the news, are you a communist? He said, I'm a communist. He was, I mean, he's a very proud communist. And this other leader for the left, they're kind of like, oh, well, I kind of believe in communism, but I'm just on the left. <laughs> so he's just weird. Yeah, yeah, well, it is weird. But anyway, Sweden has a left wing party. It's called, again, the left wing party, but it used to be called uh, the communist party, right? And they're obviously like, communist, okay? Uh, I mean, I, again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong being a communist. I'm just saying that they are lo losers, in my opinion, that I would respect them if they just call themselves the Communist Party, you know what I mean? Uh, so I'm just saying here for people in all the countries, right, we have a Communist Party, they're obviously left wing, okay. Uh, then we have the Green Party, which are more like immigrant friendly, right? Also much more communist left, right? That they're actually a Green Party. They don't care that much about the environment anymore. Uh, but anyway, they're clearly there on the very far left, right? Um, and has some green ideas, but it's mostly immigrant ideas. Um, I'm, I'm saying facts here again. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just inside. And then you have t two center parties, center right wing parties that betray the right to vote for them. The S right, the left party, the leader of the left party, right there. And that's how they could get control years ago. And then they could have the big red party, right? The big uh, supporter, yeah. 
But they're still clearly not big enough to have majority. They clearly lack that, right? They need this other uh, more than uh, four lefty parts, right, to be in control. Uh, and these are the ones that betrayed her, both the centric right party, which obviously will be on her side, but they have been for three years, but they betrayed her yesterday. And then also the Green Party betrayed her yesterday. Yeah, they betrayed them. So her idea is like to say, okay, I don't need them. I'm going to make my own party with only me and my friends, you know. So her delusion on the comment yesterday and how we're going forward now in Sweden is that she's saying that she's going to make an own government. The previous government, government then, of course, included uh, the Esten with the Green and so on, right? Because they need these uh, further left parts, right, to have, you know, a voting power, right? And she's like, I don't need them. They betrayed me. We can make our own party. Again, it doesn't make any sense. It's just completely delusional. Like, they have, they have like, 25% of the vote or something. They have, they have very little power. Like, the, the S party is an incredibly weak party right now. They've never been weak in history. It's been the biggest part of Sweden since ever, and they go in de declining every year, right? So they have incredibly little power. They're just barely bigger than the anti-immigration party, which is like taking the elder votes. I, I think it's hilarious too, in a sense. But anyway, they're so incredibly weak, and she, to me, comes off as crazy because she's like, "I'm gonna make, I'm just gonna take power with my own mandate," and you can't, it's not even remotely close to have the power. It makes absolutely zero sense to claim they're gonna do that. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, they have to use these other parties, the Communist Green Party, so on, to have enough votes to be able to do anything. Uh, and now she's claiming she's gonna do it only with her own people. Like, it doesn't make any sense. They can never win that shit. And again, the right side, the right parties are bigger than the left parties combined, right? The right is clearly bigger than the left side. And she's like, with my one left party, I'm gonna control the country. That's just cray cray. And uh, I mean, she's an old lady. I'm just saying, right? But uh, it feels to me like because her party used to be like the only party in Sweden, right? With all the power, like 50 years ago. And it almost feels like a Biden comment. I was sitting on Biden. I was saying a little bit with Biden is like, oh, we used to be. Uh, it's a little bit like, oh, is she like lost in time? Does she think they have the power of like, the 20 something? Like she's. She's acting like they still have the same man that she had when she was a teenager, you know? Because like she started her political career. And she's acting like it's 40, 50 years in the past. She's like, oh, well, back in my days, when my party had all the votes, I could do what I want. It's like, yeah, but now you have, like, now you're barely the biggest party anymore. I mean, her party is barely bigger than the moderate party, which is the right-wing blue party, and the economic right party. And it's also barely than bigger than... Uh, the anti mid part, the SD part, right? Those those three are like the three biggest parts, and they're roughly the same size, twenty percent. And she's like, "I'm gonna rule with only my power." It's like, yeah, that that power doesn't even get you bigger than one other part. It's like barely bigger than two other parties, right? It's uh, Sweden has like incredibly weak uh, uh, government uh, for like the last seven years, incredibly weak because of this uh, spread, right? And in my opinion, it probably should have done a re-election last time because it was so weak uh, three years ago. And we see it here, right? She has no power, and one reason probably why the guy even quit being with right, Levian, is because he's very, very disliked, very hated by Sweden. I think all sides of the party, or left, right, everyone hates him. He's very, very disliked, right? And honestly, not to make it too much of America, but again, I like American politics. I'm, I'm much more used to American politics, but personally. Um, in America, people hate Trump, right? I mean, obviously, people hate Trump, but people also like Trump, okay? Like, let's be, let's be fair, no, but my point is that. Trump is a divisive, you know, popularity or anti character. Biden also, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, not going into who's right or wrong or whatever. But I'm just saying that, you know, a lot of people hate Trump. A lot of people like Trump. You know what I mean? Like, he's, you know, that like. Hillary Clinton can same thing. Biden, same thing. Kevin Harris, I would, I would feel, is probably more disliked in general on both sides. But, you know, it's, it's like that, right? Uh, whoever though, like Levy and, and generally people in Sweden, right? They're party members, right? They're party leaders, like Anne Lööf and so on. Oh yeah, they're, they're all hated, right? Don Elias on, even worse. So in Sweden, these party leaders, they're kind of like just hated. Like no one likes him, you know what I mean? No one on the left likes him, no one on the right likes him. Elizabeth Trump is like 50 50. Like either you hate him or you love him, right? You know what I mean? It's like a spread of people are, you know, some people of course are neutral, but most people are either uh, yes or no, right? 
But in Sweden, everyone's like no for Lufthansa. Everyone just hates it. And the Love is also incredibly hated. So, and so on. So Sweden's uh, party leaders, they're very, very disliked. And him sitting there being incredibly hated by by the people, right? Having no power to talk about because they, they're so weak uh, government, right? Incredibly low power. You can't do anything, right? And he probably used quit threat because he's always just embarrassed on all the TV shows. Everyone makes fun of him, you know. He probably just hit the wall. He quit just out of nowhere. He's like, oh, I can't do it anymore. You know, honestly, yeah. But I get why because everyone hates him. I think with good reason for it because he's a horrible leader in my opinion. But anyway, you know, but no one likes him. I think there's a big difference from Monster from America. At least in America, it's like they either hate you or they love you. But at least someone loves you, yeah. But in Sweden, it's like it's everyone just hates you. <laughs> in Sweden, in Sweden, the only Sweden, I think, only the, I think the the kind of the, the cringe people, the, the far left or far right, have popularity in Sweden, in my opinion. Yeah, it's like you know the the SD leader, right? Jimmy is popular, but he's people, right? He said that Trump was Sweden, right? Or not really, but kind of kind of issue. Okay, let's just for, e for easy argument, I think bad causes probably Trump Sweden, but for, for easy argument, Jimmy Åkesson, then, the leader of the anti immigrant party, of course he's very hated, but he also has a lot of fans, right? And then you have this uh, Nagushi, also a uh, new female leader of the Communist Left Wing Party. Yeah, also has a lot of fans, right? Because you know she's very, kind of an, I wouldn't say it, but a little bit of a you know AOC, a little bit, right? You know, a female, young female. She is kind of similar, very young female, you know, non-white uh, again you know, leading the communist left party, right? They're very similar in, in agenda, so on definitely. But of course, AOC is actually less left, right? <laughs> That's probably yeah. Because Nagoshi, I think I pronounced that correctly, her, she is like the leader of the communist party, Sweden, right? the left party that are practically communist in every regard except just the name uh, these days. So she's actually much more left than AOC. Uh, but, they, but they are definitely similar. They're definitely similar. Very young female, you know, comi you know, kind of comet career star, kind of young star, that thing going on, right? She has a lot of fans too, right? Um, but everyone in the middle are probably used to really dislike this video, especially in the Vienna so on. So uh, that's probably why I quit, right? And Madeleine is kind of, they just kind of put her in there. And I would say the last thing here is kind of questionable if they put her in there. Yes, because of a gender, certainly is an element of it. Finally, have a woman, right? We can sneak her in there. Uh, and I think she might still become the first female prime, uh, prime minister because. The thing is that now no one is the prime minister, right? Kinda. Levin technically is, but he quit, right? So he's not really. So no one really is. So it's like, I could see them just accepting her anyway. Used to be like, we need to have someone in command, I think. I could see them just accepting her anyway, eventually. After, of course, she has to first agree on all the right wing uh, points, though. So they will probably force her to take a lot of uh, stuff as they want, right? Because again, there's no way she can take power with only her own party. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So she's probably doing something like that. And then maybe she became the first female prime minister anyway, right? Because they're like, well, we have to have someone in charge, right? The thing is that normally you probably have a re election in these things. This is a weak power, right? Uh, but the thing is that Sweden has the real elections coming soon. The real election is next year. And obviously now it's November, right? So December. So the real election is coming in like what is this? Nine months from now, eight, ten months from now. So they're not that soon, but it's a pretty soon. So they don't want to have, they don't want to do a re-election now, right? For like the three years this pine has passed, and then do the re-election because they have to have two elections in like a, a span of like eight, nine months, something like that, right? Because the starting can have a little before. Uh, like when I live in Sweden, you see all this stuff everywhere. So yeah, they have to do it twice in one year, right? So they're gonna do that. So I think it's a very low chance they're gonna do this like extra election, re-election thing, right, uh, in next month or whatever, uh, or maybe January, because then you have the re-election coming uh, soon. Have to do them both then. Uh, it's like no way, right? So I could see you're actually still becoming the female prime minister by just by default, right? Because no one wants to pay all that money and the stuff and so on. So they're probably gonna be like, oh, I guess you can be in short. It's like what? Three months left or something. I feel that's probably how it's gonna be. I feel I feel they're gonna have like nothing is gonna be done for like one or two months from now, right? And then she will probably eventually get to be it by default because people are like, oh, we we need to have someone doing it. You can uh, whatever. Then it's like four months left to the real election, you know. I feel that's probably how it's gonna go, uh, and it's gonna be ridiculous. People are gonna celebrate again that she she became the first female prime minister for like two months. 
because no one else wanted to be it and she had no power and there was no actual election but yeah you know this, it, it's kind of like that i think it just exposes how incredibly bad swedish um, system is right in general speaking uh, people should vote for this thing and this rules is currently happening especially at 17 three years ago it should probably be in a re-election three years ago immediately and it should be in a re-election re now as well right but sweden as a people they will never demonstrate they will never you know Swedes are so uh, yeah they will never fight it right so even though the government clearly is incredibly corrupt in an obvious way right an incredibly bad system uh, no one's gonna complain about it at least not enough i'm complaining here right but you know what i mean no one's gonna really gonna complain about it and nothing probably will happen so it's kind of funny i i just imagine that it's like typical swedish coming to the swedish country right? typical swedes they're all gonna hate it that she became the first prime minister but not not actually voting for her just becoming it by you know mandated force by the government like, yeah forces you in there People are gonna complain on Twitter or whatever, on YouTube, but no one's gonna do anything about it. That's probably it. I say it too, but I probably won't do anything about it either for that matter. But I think that's gonna be it, right? She's gonna get kind of shoehorned, forced to become it. Uh, probably. It's, it's gonna be crazy. And then she might, and then she probably will lose it immediately in the actual election because, yeah, the left is very weak in Sweden currently. So I don't know. I have a hard time seeing them actually. The thing is that. This is like another video, right? But the, the right wing parties have started to actually collaborate with the anti immigration party. So now the right wing parties are much stronger than they were like one or two years ago. Yeah, they're much, much stronger now when they actually are collaborating. So uh, they have a lot more power now and uh, probably we also get more votes for that reason, right? People actually see them as an actual alternative to win, right? So uh, my guess is, is that the right, uh, right party will. Uh, will win right because they they, they they basically already have the power right uh currently as we saw yesterday because they, they of course fire immediately right yeah so uh, i think it's gonna increase in power right i think they're gonna just increase like why would they decrease when they have uh, finally started to collaborate i think they're i think they're gonna get more votes so um, that's my take on it see so even if she became technically then the first president uh prime minister i mean uh, of Sweden as a woman, he kind of forced shoehorn from the sideline, you know. Even if it happens, she probably will only remain for like a few months, best probably. So it's also gonna be kind of scaldy glad again, or kind of kind of hilarious, funny. Baron guys, subscribe, stop about that. Uh, you know, I don't do that much video in the channel, but sometimes when I feel like it, and I felt this was a special occasion. So Sweden. Anyways, see you guys and have a great day.